Today, I have 10 new Halloween DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. All right, so the first one is going to require a little wooden block or breadboard and some stickers from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some paint and some paper, stuff like that. But this is what we're going to start with. I'm going to start by taking off the tag on the back. Be sure you take all that stuff off. And then I'm going to use kind of a coarse grit sanding paper to get around the edges. I got this little breadboard at Goodwill and it had very rough edges, kind of splintery. So I wanted to clean all that off and then of course afterwards wipe all the dust away so it doesn't interfere with the rest of your product products sticking down like your paint and your glue and stuff like that. Okay, so now I'm going to choose a sticker. I want this to go on a little coffee bar section in my house, so I chose these stickers because I thought they would be really cute. Now this is just some a little paper pad that originally comes from Target and I got it at Dollar, well not at Dollar Tree, at Dirt Cheap. I'm going to mix two paints to try to get the right color here, so I'm going to take an orange and try to match that pumpkin as close as possible. I didn't quite get it, I'll just, you know, spoiler alert, but it's close enough. So I'm just mixing it up with a little wood stick in my cup here, and I'm just going to start laying this on just to the top of this block. I don't completely coat the sides, but you can go ahead and do that if you want to. I'm going to be sanding a little bit more shortly, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't take too much paint away. All right, so we're gonna trace out how much paper we need to cover up a portion of the bottom, and we're gonna put it on with a glue stick. This used to be purple, but I've had it for some time now. Bought it on clearance a long time ago, and the purple has faded, but the adhesiveness is still good. It still works perfectly. So this is not a perfect fit, and that is not a problem. I'm gonna press from the inside outward, just like I always do. And you can see how it overhangs the edges here. And I'm just going to take my sanding block and just sand down and away. And this is going to take the edge off, the excess off, give you a nice clean finish. Just like that. Now you can go back over with your paint and finish up any part that you want to finish. I didn't quite mix up enough, but I used what I had. All right, so I love this one because I know when I get up in the mornings, I want my coffee before anything else. And he looks so tired. So we're going to put him down here. I'm just trying to find a spot that I think looks good. And I know I want to use a couple of these stickers. So I'm going to put the little cup on here and press it down once I know that that's where I want them to be. And then I'm going to take the little bat sticker. A mm, couple of options of where it could go, but I think the top's going to be cute. And then I'm going to embellish it with a little bit of my jute cord. And wrap it around back. I'm going to start my glue on the back side so it's nice and clean in the front. A little bit of hot glue. Press that down in there. And then just wind it around the board going to overlap the paint and the paper area there. Just like that. No rhyme or reason. You can use any type of trim that you want to use or you don't have to use anything at all. You could use a pretty ribbon or colored um, cords, anything like that if you'd like. So this is a little bow I had made earlier. I uh, showed my mother how to make a bow. We were working on our bows. So I already had it and I'm going to use it right over here on the side. If you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the link in the description box below. Thank you. Now this is pressed down and I'm going to take that same sandpaper and just go back over and take the edge off so you can see the wood underneath. It's just going to give it the rustic look that I enjoy in my home, but you certainly can leave this part out if you would like. There you go. I'm getting to the cutesy Halloween stuff. How about you? The fun stuff. 
Okay, project number two. This sign has two sides and we're going to use the two sides. It's got a little damage. I had done a previous project. As you can see here, I had pumpkins on there. And it's time to give it some new life. I thought maybe I could peel this off, but let me tell you something. The Mod Podge I used is really holding well. So the main part I'm going to sand is where I've torn the paper and around the edges so that it is kind of more flat and we blend in a little bit better. I'm going to just take my little chippy brush here and my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and go over this area nicely. Going to give it a pretty good coat and then let it dry. Once it is dry, we're going to use these napkins. I got these at Dirt Cheap, if you recognize the little price tag there. I think it probably came from like Dollar General or someplace like that originally, but you can find Halloween napkins anywhere, anywhere. This print was something very pretty. I like this. If you tear the paper on the edge above the little polka dot line there, um, there's like little preparations that hold it together. If you tear right above that, you can easily pull your two layers apart. So there's a little tip for you if you're having problems separating the two ply napkins. And it'll come right apart. Just be careful with it. It's very, very thin. I'm gonna take some matte Mod Podge, put that down on my board. I don't want to use too much, so I'm just going to use a little at a time and add where needed so that I can get my layer of napkin down without tearing it. If you get it too wet, it will tear on you. I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to carefully place it over where I think I want it. And you can see I'm just pressing down where the lines were, the folds in the napkin. And you do this the same way. You're just going to press down and very gently rub that from the inside outward. And you'll press any bubbles that you have right on out of there. Be careful. Don't worry so much about wrinkles if you get one or two. Because if you start trying to lift this up, you're, it's going to be a mess. Now I'm just very gently using this little tool to help me make sure that it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to gently, gently just hold and press down and it'll help the edges come away. It's not going to give you a perfect finish yet, but that's not a concern because we are going to fix that. I strive to make all of my projects look high end, so I'm always trying to give you little tips along the way so that you can do the same. Very gently with a sanding block that has seen probably better days. I'm going to just go down and away from and I didn't, I didn't let this dry yet. So this is still, still damp, but I didn't put a lot of glue, so it's not, it's not too bad. And then you get a nice finished look there. I've gone ahead and sanded the black bottom all around the high points so that it has the kind of a rusted look. And I'm gonna do the same thing to that pole that's holding it up, that little stem there. I'm gonna rough it up a bit and it'll be ready once we get it together. Now, Dollar Tree has these gorgeous journaling cards. All they are is there are two pieces of paper that have a bunch of different tags and um, pictures on them, and I'm just gonna choose one that I like, and this one I really, really like the font and the shape of this. I'm gonna cut out as close as I can to the black line. Just trimming it out there. These are not stickers, so you're going to have to cut if you use these. And we're going to make a little 3D sign right on top of this. I can accomplish that by using a Jenga block. This is a larger of the Jenga blocks. It's bigger than what I got uh, at Dollar Tree, but it doesn't matter. I got mine at Goodwill, but you can use the ones from Dollar Tree if that's what you have. And I like the space that it takes up so that it lifts it far away from the sign. And you'll see in a moment that it creates a lot of shadow and interest around there, and I like that. So I'm going to just take my hot glue, put that down on there. Be sure that your, your decoupage is dry. Make sure that everything is dry before you do this, or it'll just most likely peel it straight off of there. Just pressing it down, and this is what the first side is going to look like. You can put a bow on it. You can do anything you want to embellish it on that side if you would like. I'm going to go over to the second side for our third project. Now this one's going to be a little more playful than the other side. 
I'm going to just put a piece of that from the same little book, I believe. Just a little scrapbook paper, whatever you have, right over the top of the one that is there, the book page that is there. Again with the Mod Podge, putting it on with a different brush. And they get a good coverage, most especially you want more on this side because that paper is heavier than the tissue paper on the other side and you want it to really get a good cling. You don't want it to come apart. So once I've put it exactly over my paper or close enough, I'm going to press it down with my little tool here and then kind of crease the sides, trim them off. And then I've got these little felt pieces and they came off of a garland that I had. And these little tags, they're adhesive on the back. They came originally from Target as well. But again, I got them at Dirt Cheap. I'm just using this marker. Um, I wasn't sure if I would get enough coverage with this. And I actually, after I did it, was not too happy with the coverage. Maybe a couple of more coats, but eh, I didn't really... It wasn't giving me what I wanted, so I went back with some Apple Barrel White acrylic paint and just painted over that. And I'm just trying to get down in all the cracks and crevices. I've put it aside to let it dry while we figure out where we want our bats to live. So I know I want them at angles, and I'm just using the paintbrush to kind of get an idea of where I want to put that tag once it is dry. I'm going to use some hot glue here on my bat. And put it down. These are felt. I don't know if I mentioned that before. You can get these in all different shapes and colors and designs at Dollar Tree. So if you prefer jack-o'-lanterns or skeletons, you can definitely find something like that. But I like the bats and that's what I had on hand. I still got supplies from last year I'm working through. So a little bit of hot glue on the base and we can put this back together. Okay, now that our sticker is dry, I'm going to peel it off and get ready to place it down on the sign. Just like that. And once I get it where I want it, I just press it down and it will stick on there nicely. But you can certainly use uh, any type of sticker that you have or a stencil on this if you want to. You can use individual stickers to, to put out Happy Halloween. You can use rub-ons, whatever you got. So I've got some table scatter or some confetti here that has little bats and stars and skeletons in it. And I thought these little bats would be perfect. They have little perforations where you can bend the wings up. They're so cute. So I thought those would be nice right here on the sign and it covers up the holes. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool. But it leaves a little extra something, I think. I think we could do better. So at first I thought I would use a marker to trim this out. But then I thought, you know, I've got some black ribbon. Let's just use that. And you're guaranteed to get a straight line if you're using a straight piece of ribbon, right? So I've tucked it behind the wings and the tail and just put it off with my hot glue gun. I've put it down with the hot glue gun. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. Just go under the little wing, under the ears, right across the top. And then all I have to do is trim it off. And just get as close as you can to that. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is crafted. So what do you think about it? Yeah, I think that's good. But he needs a little something extra on his eyes. So I'm going to give him a little silver dot in each eye. You can barely see this on camera, but I could see it in person. See the little dot? Just a tiny dot. Just to give him a little spark in his eye. On to number four. Little chubby pumpkin. I'm going to take my white chalk paint and give this a good coat. Laying it on kind of thick. And when you do that, you're going to have to give it extra dry time. Although chalk paint does dry pretty quickly. I always put my things in front of a fan that I have in the room in my craft space. Once it is dry, I'm using my glue stick. See, I'm trying to give you options between the Mod Podge and the glue sticks. You can decide what works best for you. Now, I'm 
deciding here which part of the napkin that I like the best and I'm being sure not to get too close to the edge because that's where all the little polka dotted spots are where they have little holes and I don't want that so I'm just going to place it down here I like what's on here and I'm going to smooth it out now this is in fast motion because I don't want to bore you with all the details but do understand that I'm doing this very gently I'm going to trim off some excess here and I did have a little tear in my little pumpkin's chin over there but that's easy fixed easily fixed okay same thing here it's still a little bit you know it's not completely dried yet but that's okay I'm just sanding a little bit very gently and then the paper will just flake away essentially now once that is done, I'm going to pick another sign, and I like this one. Wish you a beautiful Halloween. I'm going to cut that out, leaving a white border, and I'm going to put it on here. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. I sure appreciate it, and it does help my channel. Okay, I'm going to use some of these little foam stickers. I'm going to put these on the back to give it just a little bit of height and a little dimension. You could use the little dots that you get from Dollar Tree if you like. Whatever you have. Or you can use another Jenga block and do it like that. There we go. You can put a bow on here. You can do whatever you like if you want to, you know, make it your own. To me, this is good just like this. I did try making a little bow, but nah, I like it like this. Easiest craft in this entire video, number five, is a simple card sign. You go to Dollar Tree, you pick one of their beautiful seasonal cards out. You're going to glue it together, press it out so you don't have any wrinkles and everything's one nice solid piece. Get you a freestanding sign and some hot glue. Center it and press it down. This card is probably a five by seven. It may be bigger than that. So you just want to be sure you have a sign that stands. I got mine on clearance at Kirkland's a few years ago. Now, look at there. Another option. And this is number six. We're going to make a bat sign on the back. See, no scary stuff. No scary stuff. These little tags came from Dollar Tree. Or these little wood cutouts. This came from a bottle wrapper. As you put it around like a two liter bottle or whatever. I saved it because I knew I could do something else with it. So I'm going to use some hot glue. I've chosen which one I want. The pack came with several different kinds and it did originally come from Target. But I got it where? At Dirt Cheap. Okay. So I'm just going to place this down once I get it where I want it. And then I know I'm going to put this on here somewhere. So I'm going to take some of my Harvest Orange and paint my little pumpkin. You can paint this entire thing one color if you like. You do not have to do an orange pumpkin and then different colored words. You can certainly just do the entire thing. If you got spray paint sitting around and you want to do something quick that dries quick, go outside and give it some white or some black chalk paint and you'll be good to go. This is black chalkboard paint that I'm using on my words. And I'm just trying to be sparing with this. I don't want to make a big mess and have it glopped all over the place. It takes too long to dry when you do that. So I'm using as little as possible while still getting, you know, a pretty nice coverage. All right. So once I've done that, I'm just smoothing it out to make sure I don't have any bubbles of paint that's going to take forever to dry. This is somewhat what it looks like. And when it is dry, it looks like this. Here are some options. You can use any type of a paper cutout if you would like. You can put your little sign down here and put a cutout behind it. Whatever you might have. Or, here are some little dots. You can get these from Dollar Tree. Anytime you use these, it's going to give you dimension because your item is not going to lay flat. It's going to stand away from the surface. I like that look. I use these types well this technique anyway in lots of my projects 
I'm just going to add it in the areas that you can't see through it. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to put it near a loop or something where you can see right through it. So I put it kind of hidden behind the thicker parts of this little wood cutout. Now that was me trying to get rid of some glue. Little glue webs. Okay, so I put it in the center. I'm going to press down. And I like it. I like it very much like that. Could go over it and kind of do like a little whitewash on there or a little light white distressing if you want to so that it really makes a happy Halloween stand out. But I like it and I don't mind that it's like that, you know. I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree stickers, their little wood stickers, and I'm going to color some of the bats with my furniture marker in black. It dries fairly quickly. I'm going to take those off and just add those couple of them on there here and there easy peasy okay now we're gonna do a little haunted house block this is some canyon black satin paint I'm going to use a piece of little scrapbook paper and there I have a couple of books to choose from these stickers from Dollar Tree in this little box that I got at Goodwill, but you can use any type of little shadow box that you get from Dollar Tree. The one that I'm using is about a six by six square. If you wanna get something similar, that's what I'm using. So I'm going to choose a paper. And since I've got bats going on pretty good bit in this bunch of projects, I think that this would be a cute option. It is a little bit bigger than my box, so I'm going to go around with the pencil mark it and then I'm going to use my little paper cutter and trim it off. I don't have a link for the exact paper cutter but I will try to get you a link to something similar if you like the pendulum type paper cutter. I'm very happy with mine. Okay using that glue stick I'm going all over the flat back part of this little box and I'm going to put my paper down. This is like a cardstock. It's kind of um it's thicker than regular paper, you know, you know, craft paper. So I'm going to press it down nice and flat and it fits fairly well on there. My sticker pack did not come with a moon and I really want a moon on my scenery. So I'm just going to take some of these Dollar General stickers that I got for like 90% off one year and I've had them forever. I'm going to use those by painting them and then putting them by the fan so they can dry. And while that's happening, I'm going around the edges and roughing up the edges. It's just more of a rustic look and it is gonna kind of burnish that down for the next step. All right, I'm taking an artist pencil, but you can use any pencil that you want. And I'm just laying the side of the pencil lid down to give some shadowing on here. Now, I'm gonna give the credit of this to Trish from Crafting Cousins because she did this on one of her projects and she said she always does it on a certain type of project and I thought you know what that would be really good pretty much on anything so I've taken her little tip I'm giving her credit for it and just going around the edges to give this an older more aged and rustic look gives it kind of a spooky look on the edges if that's even a thing it is now that's a spooky look we're gonna call that a spooky look Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take my little glittery haunted mansion and I'm going to put it down. I'm not sticking it all the way down till I know where I want it. Got a little witch that's glittery. I'm going to put her up there in the top in the sky. I know I want her in the sky. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to press those down. And they have the little foam stickers on the back too, so they stand up just a little. Gotta have more bats, right? You can never have too many bats. So I'm going to color some more, again, with that same furniture marker. It took me several days to do all these projects, y'all, but I had a blast. I had my scary podcast going and the music sometimes, and I was just, I was having myself a blast. Now, it looks like there was an explosion in my craft room right now, but hey, I had fun and I've got so much more to show you. I cannot wait to show you more. Okay, 
So the same little technique, going around the edges of that moon after it's nice and dry with the pencil and then just kind of rubbing that edges out to kind of give it a, a dirty aged look, I guess. Oh, I love it. I love the way this looks. Thank you, Trish, for the idea. Okay, so far so good. Now we want to put our little bats in flight up there. And I like them hanging over the edges like that. But you know what? It's missing something. Why don't we put a jack-o'-lantern in there? And I think I'll do white. And I'm just going to take some white chalk paint and quickly go over this. I'm kind of using a dry brush. I'm not, I'm not putting a heavy amount there. Let it dry. And then once it's dry, I'm going to start shading it with a pencil as well. I'm going to shade where it might would have its little stalk naturally growing, its little vine top. I'm just lightly coloring in a little bit there and I'll take my thumb and just rub it into that chalk paint and it will just smear so nicely and gives it such a nice little shadow. I'm going to go around in the eyes just a little bit, darken those up and yeah I made a boo-boo there but that's okay because I'm going to put some ribs on the pumpkin so it won't even matter. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to blend those in a little bit. Isn't he cute? Oh my goodness, he's cute. Okay, so we're going to put him down here. It already has one sticker, but I'm going to add one more right on top of it so that it really stands out because the pumpkin is so much bigger. Uh, it's not in proportion, so we want it to look like it's standing out further than the castle. Like you're going to pass it going down the road before you even get to that castle or that mansion, whichever way you want to call it. So actually I have three layers. It's really standing out there. Love that. Okay. So now we're going to go on to the next project. We're going to use some of these little felt banner pieces. I've got some ribbons. Two different colored fabrics and two of these monogram pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. You can see here, doesn't matter which letter you get because it's going to be covered up. Tear off your bows and I'm going to show you how you can separate this. This is my little metal ruler that I got from Dollar Tree and I use this thing for so many things. If you slip this underneath there, you can gently pry apart the two layers. So you're going to pull upward a little bit, go around the edges because it's only held there by glue. There are no nails. You can see the glue there. And we're going to do the bat pumpkin. We're going to have two projects, one with each pumpkin. Okay, so you can see there's some weird damage over there on the left side of that pumpkin. I don't know what that was, but I bought it that way because I knew it wouldn't matter. I'm going to use my Mod Podge. Give this a good, good, good thick coat all over this pumpkin, even on those little edges and around the stem. And then I'm going to lay down my fabric. Now, you can get fabric at Dollar Tree. You can get fabric at Walmart. You can use an old shirt. You can use an old dress, maybe from one of your children. You can use any type of fabric you want, a napkin, you know, like a cloth napkin. Mine did come from Goodwill. And then I'm going to put on a thick layer of this Mod Podge. The reason we're still in this in the thick layer of Mod Podge is because it will get hard and it's going to be so much easier to cut and to sand. I tried to sand down that S and it was a disaster, so I don't recommend that. Um, go over it instead with some white chalk paint. And that's what I've done here. It's thicker than regular acrylic paint. You might could use spray paint if you wanted to. But you're going to put a good thick coat on there and then make sure that it dries thoroughly. While that is drying, we're going to go on to the next pumpkin. We're going to mix two different color paints here to try to match the color of the pumpkin that we have. 
I didn't do a perfect job with this, but close enough. I just felt like I needed to cover up those spots that are down there on that pumpkin. You don't have to do this because you're going to be covering it back up, but I did have a little bit of um, that was peeking out from underneath where that second layer was going to go, and I did not want that to show. So I'm um, just go ahead and do this, but you can skip this part if you didn't tear yours like I tore mine. So for the center section, we're going to use the black fabric. Just going to cut off only what I need so I can save the rest of the fabric for another project. And we're going to put this down with a little bit of hot glue. Protecting our fingers first, of course. I'm going to put the hot glue around the edges and then fold it over. I'm going to do this all the way around the sides first and then around the curves in the top. And then that top is finished off and then around the bottom. Now I'm going to take the little ghost that I've picked here and some of these will easily come off. So I'm just kind of removing the black eyes and the face because it looked like a scary face and that's not what I'm going for in my projects. So it did take a whole day for this to dry, but once it's dry, you can just easily take your scissors and cut it like paper. Look how easy this comes off. Or you can use your little cutting knife, whatever you choose. But it is so thick and strong now that this heavy grit paper is filing it off like it's regular paper. Perfect. I love it. Now I'm going to add back the center section. You can a little bit still see that S under there, but it's not that big of a deal and it's going to be covered. So you could use a second paint and let that, a second coat of paint and let that dry if you'd like, but I'm good with this. We're going to have a little bat right on top and you won't even be able to see. Don't worry about the holes. We're going to fix that. So I'm just going to put my little felt bat at an angle here. And then I'm going to glue around his little ears and the top of his head. Any place that may be trying to come away. And go ahead and secure those down. And just put the tiniest little dots under there. I love my glue gun. So I'm going to use this glass writer, which I use for so many things that are not glass, and that is wonderful. It came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to fill in the holes where the ribbon went through for the banner when it was a little garland. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this silver to just give him some little eyes. I don't want him to have big white eyes, just a little hint of an eye. Wow, I sounded like Bob Ross, didn't I? Okay, so there we go. You can see his little eyes. And we're going to put this other pumpkin back together. He's going to be our ghost pumpkin. Going to go over here. Excuse my head. And we're going to put this little ghost down on here. Hot glue. Fix him right to the center. Just like that. Pressing it down. Now, we're, we've got to give him a face though, right? He needs a friendly face, just like the little bat. So I'm just going to make a smile. I'm going to use the original holes from the hanger as his eyes. And I'm going to draw him a little a U-shaped smile with the little dash right beside it. Now, he's happy like the bat. Okay, I think to make them even cuter, we're going to put some messy bows on top. What do y'all think? Go ahead and use any type of bow you have. I'm going to just run through this little messy bow. These are six inch pieces that I'm using of different types of ribbon. None of them have wire. They don't need wire, so this is perfect if you have unwired thin ribbons laying around for maybe other projects. You can just stack those together. I'm going to make the first bow to coordinate with the pumpkin, and then we'll make a different color to go with the other pumpkin. So this is for the orange bat. I mean, not the bat. Oh my goodness. The orange pumpkin is going to look like this. I'm just going to tie it with another piece of the black ribbon. And then that way we don't even have to cut that off. It will be incorporated into the bow. So I'm just going to try to get close to my center. Tie that tightly in a double knot. 
and then that's what, kind of what our bow is going to look like. You can go ahead and either dovetail your ends if that's the look that you like. You can cut them at a slant. You can leave them straight across. You can make little points. Do whatever you want to do on this. But I love doing it this way. And then the thin ribbons don't need any type of uh, trimming on them except trying to make them even, which is what I've done here. Folded them in the center, gathered them up, and just trimmed off the edge. And then this is what we have. I love adding that little jute in there. Just gives it a little more of a rustic look, and I'm all about that rustic life. All right, now see, isn't that cute? That's gonna look perfect. I used ribbons I already had, but the little checked ribbon is a ribbon that I got this year from Dollar Tree. Love that. It's a dark orange and it matches the pumpkin. Now the orange on this pumpkin is a little bit brighter, so we're gonna change it up a bit. I'm gonna use a brighter ribbon, and then I'm going to take some of the orange, some of the black, and some of the white, and then of course, we're gonna use a little more of the jute that we used in the other one. I'm gonna cut those in pieces, layer them up. Doesn't really matter how you put these together, I just like to alternate. And then the three pieces of the jute on top, I'm gonna take a little orange scrap that I already had. We're gonna double knot that. We're gonna fold it over, grab our edges, trim them off, and then there you go. Right above that second layer, I'm gonna add the bow on here. And glue my finger down, apparently. That's why you should be protecting your fingers, and I didn't do it this time. Shame on me. Okay, so there we go. Cute. All right, this has got to be my favorite project. This is number 10, and if you're still here, please leave me a jack-o'-lantern. This thing is so cute. All right, so I'm gonna use a thrifted little stand. I'm going to use some spray paint to give it a good coat of paint. I'm gonna use some of these vase filler pieces from Dollar Tree. You can get raffia at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use a couple of different colors. I'm gonna use some scrap pieces of floral foam, and I'm gonna use some of those wire cutters. I'm gonna stuff the inside of my little cauldron, and you can get these at Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna stuff it with some scrap pieces of floral foam. This is just to fill it up so we have something to set our piece of paper on the top. I've taken a piece of paper, filled it straight in the top. It goes right down that lip and sits on top of the foam. Now we're gonna start making the insides of whatever it is this witch has cooked up. So we're gonna use black and orange bubbles. You can use any color you want, but I like black and orange and white, so that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna add dots of glue and put these down. You try to use a cool temp if you have a cool temp uh, on your glue gun. Mine has two different temperatures because these are foam and they can melt, so just be very careful. And you see I, that one stuck to my finger protector and came right off, look at that, what a mess. You're gonna keep adding. I'm just kind of going around and looking at the size of the holes and the shape and the color and just adding in where I need to add in. As you can see there, I'm adding in little ones and big ones, just going around and around the top until the top is completely finished. You could definitely use, leave those little glue strings on there if you wanted to might give it a little extra creepy look. So there's the top of it so far. Here is our dried painted base. Love it. Very cute. Now we're going to use a wood circle to be the base of what we're doing next. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this um, straw and I'm going to almost like roll it into a nest because this is going to be like the base of our fire. We're gonna have a fire because we've gotta have, we gotta have something cooking in that pot, right? Gotta have it cooking in that cauldron. So I'm gonna take some glue, take that spool that I have wound up there, place it down, and then I'm gonna cut around it. This easier for me to do it this way. You could certainly just go ahead and put that straight on the top of the, the little um, base riser that we have, but I didn't want to quite do it that way. I don't know why this particular raffia has knots in it. Just work around it. Now you're going to take this and wrap it around your four fingers. Just wrap it around there a whole bunch of times. 
slide it off and then you're going to cut it and when you cut it you've got two different sides here just like this and this is going to be like a fire nice so now you got to tie it together and get you another piece of that raffia i should have done that before i cut it but i didn't just to show you it can be done go ahead and tie it in the middle so that nothing comes apart now the darker the color the closer to the bottom of the fire it should be right if you've ever looked at flames that's kind of how it looks I'm gonna put my red on the bottom this is like a dark orange actually I'm gonna just glue it right in the center it kind of looks like flames coming up right now this is what I should have done the first time wrap it around your hand get your loops get another piece tie it then you're gonna put your thumb on the knot pull it up cut it now you've got your orange layer you can just trim that down however you want to trim it and put it across and inside the darker color one needs to be a little shorter trim it up easy easy I'm gonna put some glue there and just put it across or on top of the darker color there it's almost like an X but it doesn't matter you can do it however you want but it will keep it from being too bulky in the center I'm pressing down really really hard there to make sure that that glue goes all the way through to the base now we're ready to set the cauldron down it fits perfectly down in there so now we can go ahead and put it on the top of our little pedestal okay now how's that pretty cool it's so cute I love this okay so now I'm gonna take my glue gun and start putting bubbles over the side so it is bubbling down into the fire you might want to use the smaller bubbles as you go down but you don't have to you can do this any way that you want to I'm gonna go back in and add things to the top add things around the side I'm just tilting it here so that you can see a little bit better what it is that I am doing. I could have cut all this out in editing, but I know some people need to see the details, so I'm just showing you how I kind of twist these and turn them and how I add these in. Be sure that you kind of alternate your colors. You can use some orange, you can use some black. It's going to give it some depth and some interest. And I'm just going all the way down and even onto the base there. So it is bubbled out and is spilled onto the base. You can also, if you run out of the small ones like I did, you can take some of the larger ones and just cut them with scissors and just glue that foam part straight down. And I think I left a part of that in there to show you how I do it. Let's see, do I? I think I do so here I'm just cutting and then you can just put that down and it gives it a little bit of a smaller bubble just like that so you want to continue on if you have enough and you want to go all the way down you certainly can but I wanted to stop right here on the base oh my gosh I love this but if we've got bubbles we need smoke right so to signify steam or smoke or a witchy spell coming out of here I'm gonna make some curls out of one piece of my pipe cleaners you can see I just made little twists around a piece of stick that I have there and I'm just gonna poke these down in the empty spots oh how cute would you have put those in there or left them out I think it looks cute I think it looks like steam coming out okay so those are ten brand new projects for you and I've kind of mixed them in my new backdrop here for Halloween tell me which ones of these do you plan on making do you have the supplies already in your house to make some of these I know some of these were from fall items and some of these were thrifted I hope that you do try some of these if you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. 
Thanks to the ones of you who keep coming back to see my videos and making sweet comments. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye.